<laughs> it's alive! Ah, oh, how are you meant to do it? In 1953, a graduate student named Stanley Miller mixed four simple chemicals, methane, ammonia, hydrogen, and water, heated them up, and shocked them with electricity to mimic lightning. He hoped the results would be the key to unlocking the origins of life, but almost 70 years on from the experiment, we still don't have the answer. Figuring it out is going to take some serious detective work. Even the timing is uncertain. All we know for sure is that life began sometime between the formation of Earth 4.5 billion years ago and the oldest fossils 3.4 billion years ago. That leaves a window of 1.1 billion years. Some people think life could have come to Earth from somewhere else in space, a concept with the slightly off-putting name of panspermia. The idea is that life could have come to Earth from another planet on a meteoroid, somehow surviving the harsh environment of space and the crash landing to begin our evolution. But that doesn't seem very credible, because we have no evidence for life anywhere else in the cosmos, and it still doesn't help us answer the fundamental question of how life arose in the first place. Darwin wondered if life began in a warm little pond, but the first serious theory about the origin of life was called the primordial soup. Scientists thought when Earth was young, the oceans were filled with the chemicals needed for life, and they eventually assembled themselves into simple living cells. Then came Stanley Miller's experiment, and while it didn't create life itself, it did produce amino acids, the building blocks of proteins. Further experiments showed that amino acids could join together to form proteins when they're heated up. Proteins perform a lot of essential functions in living organisms, like acting as enzymes that speed up chemical reactions. But the idea that proteins started life on their own has now been largely rejected. Life has to be able to reproduce, and that means you need molecules that can copy themselves. The strongest candidate is RNA. RNA is a similar chemical to DNA, but it can also fold up and act as an enzyme, just like a protein. RNA is not as good as DNA at storing information, and it's not as versatile as proteins, but it's a bit of a molecular jack-of-all-trades. So it seems more likely that the first life forms were based on RNA, and that DNA and proteins came later. The trouble is, in the lab we find that RNA needs a lot of help to assemble or copy itself. So chances are, it wasn't enough to start life on its own. As far as we know, life can't exist as chemicals in a soup. All the living things we know about are made of cells that package up the chemicals. Some scientists reckon that the first organisms were made of oil droplets or bubbles that acted like primitive cells, providing the structure for life to get going. In the lab, we can create droplets that show lifelike behavior, sensing and responding to their neighbors and moving towards food sources, a bit like Pac-Man. Crucially though, these droplets can't replicate or evolve, meaning it's unlikely that this guy was your ancient ancestor. Finally, it's been suggested that life began with chemical reactions that extracted energy from the environment and used that energy to build the molecules of life. In other words, metabolism came first. This might have happened in hydrothermal vents at the bottom of the ocean, where energy from inside Earth heats the water up to 400 degrees. So which came first, cells, metabolism, or genetics? It's a bit of a chicken and egg conundrum. When any of these theories are tested out in the lab, none of them produce anything remotely lifelike. The alternative is that life arose fully formed, with all of these elements in place right at the start. That might seem even more unlikely, but recent evidence has led some scientists to think that's exactly what happened. The chemistry required involves ultraviolet light and periodic drying, so the most likely location for this is thought to be chemical-rich pools on land. You can read more about that idea in New Scientist. If you'd like to subscribe, we'll give you 20% off if you use the code SAM20. So the origin of life is still shrouded in mystery. Scientists have tried all sorts of experiments to recreate life. They haven't gone all the way yet, but we've made a lot of progress. Maybe one day soon, we'll succeed in creating artificial life in the lab, which could tell us how our oldest ancestor came to be. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs>